<laughs> Crap. Hey, what's up guys? I'm Dan H and I locked my keys in my WJ in the rain. So I guess today we're gonna be on a quest to uh, to make some new keys for this bad boy because I only have one set. So once again, another key fob quest and we'll cut some keys to go along with this bad boy too. Whew. There we go. All right guys, I'm gonna show you this because I trust you. I know you're good, honest citizens and uh, I know you're only gonna use this for good purposes, like getting your keys out of your WJ. You are not gonna steal other people's WJs. Thou shall not steal, right guys? So here we go. Got this plastic cutting board, wedging it in the door. And I got my trusty old coat hanger. We're gonna go try to hit the unlock button. So let's go fishing. my keys yeah again of course not on purpose I'm hungry we got a bacon egg and cheese on order right, we're gonna try to fish this coat hanger into the weather stripping we're not gonna pierce the weather stripping that would be bad but you just want to feel for it you can try to slide it out of the way and then you go ahead and you work the old coat hanger down through the crack there we go now we are in the vehicle. And then the rest is just a game of uh, trying to hit that button. There we go. Got that old cutting board wedged in there nice. Got the coat hanger in the vehicle. And let's see if we could push this automatic window down button. See that right there? Gotta try to push the window down. That might be the easiest bet. Because to unlock the vehicle, you have to flick it up. We don't want to do that. So let's get this window down. Come here, guys, look. Got the hanger on the auto window button. Try to apply gentle down pressure. Yeah! Woo! We're in, guys. We are in. Here we go, guys. Check that out. No damage to the vehicle at all completely safe we did not bend anything we did not rip any weather stripping we are in look at that excellent all right let's get out of here all right guys let's hear it for the old hanger trick safe and effective i think it only took me about eight minutes to break inside this wj it's only the second time i've broken into a wj i've probably broken into an xj about a hundred times i think i could tell you probably 12 different ways on how to get inside a locked XJ, but uh, that's it. I'm not gonna show you anything else on breaking into vehicles right now. Just a little slice of knowledge on the WJ. Um, it really helped that the vehicle was on and running. This way I could only hit the window down button. If the vehicle is off, then you'd have to go for the lock unlock button. Now, if the battery was dead, that's a whole new story, but uh, just giving you a little bit of knowledge for today. Uh, knowledge is power, guys. Use your powers for good, not for evil. Do not break into anyone else's Jeep unless they ask you to. So uh, now I'm gonna go get some keys cut, and I do have programmable fobs for this WJ. I wasn't gonna show you just yet, but I figured we'd uh, dive into this experiment today since I was locked out. It seems appropriate. So we will get keys cut, and we will try to program these fobs to this WJ. So let's uh, let's cut some keys. Let's go to the locksmith again. All right, guys, we're at the locksmith, and we got our key fobs. Supposedly, we could program these ourselves, but if I can't do it, I guess I'm in the right spot. Yeah. So um, these were on Amazon. They're self-programmable key fobs. They were about 80 bucks each. Now, you could program up to four per one vehicle, I think. Now, since they were 80 bucks, I could only afford two, but I figured that's a good start. So let's go ahead and give these a shot. All right, real quick, before we get into our aftermarket fobs, let's take a look at what this manual says about our key fobs from the factory right here. 
programming additional transmitters. Up to four transmitters can be programmed. See your authorized dealer. So I guess the WJ wants you to seek out the dealer with the DRB3 programmers. Not today, Jeep. All right. Step one, open them. All right. We got a Dorman OBD key fob programmer. Nice. Put that over here. Let's read these instructions. It's always a good idea. Disclaimer, all currently programmed and new remotes must be reprogrammed to your vehicle. Please have all your remotes in hand at time of programming. I got this fob. And I got my stock fob. There we go. All right, I got my three fobs, got my programmer. Now it says turn vehicle to the on position without starting your engine. We'll just put this in the ignition on position. Insert programmer in OBD2 port. Cool. Now wait 10 seconds, then press lock and unlock buttons on the key fob simultaneously for three seconds. Press lock button for two seconds. Wow, I think I did it. I gotta be programmed in rapid succession. Lock, unlock. Lock, unlock. Whoop, <laughs> it auto started. You double tap lock and this car auto starts. Let me cut that off. All right, that was pretty cool. You gotta program these in rapid succession. Don't let any time waste between you program the first one and the second one and the second one and the third one and so on and so on. Maybe I will buy two more of these and I'll go fob crazy because that was pretty easy to program. So thank you Dorman for your product. I was even able to program the OEM key with the aftermarket key, score. All right guys, check this out. Phase two of my WJ key mod, flip out keys and look at this. This housing can fit the controls of this peanut in here. So now we have a key and a fob and one awesome little piece. No more key and dangling fob. It's all gonna be right here. So what we have to do now is we're gonna have to open this up. We're gonna have to take this key out so the locksmith can cut this key. And then when it's cut, we'll put this back together with the program chip inside here. So let's open this up. Now we got three screws little baby screws in the back of each one of these fobs. We'll go ahead and use this cup holder to hold these tiny screws. And I hope I don't drop these under the seat. That would suck. I should probably do this on the workbench, but my workbench <laughs> is messy these days. All right. Let's see. All right, yeah, this spring is coiled up there. Pretty nice. That's it. And there we go. The key fob chip goes in there. All right, let's bring these two blanks in. We'll have the locksmith cut them to the shape. All right, guys, there you have it. A few quick minutes later and we got two duplicated keys for just under 30 bucks all right let's get home and let's get all these keys together better make sure they work real quick <laughs> one two all right all right See if we can figure out how to put this thing back together. Oh, what a mess. I'm pretty sure the button went in here. So let's see. I know that the key folds in here. This looks like it holds everything in place. There we go. We got a little groove right there. It's probably where our spring goes. But it's got to wind up. So let's give it a little twist. 
So let's see how we wind this thing to get that spring action going. And we'll put this little cap on right here. So we'll put this on like here. And the key folds down somewhere like this. There. Pop a screw in here. Oh, hey, look at this. <laughs> this one has the trunk open button. I guess it was just a blank in there. Oh, well. Let's open this. Come on, peanut. Pop our screwdriver in there. Do a little twist. There it is. Insert peanut. So it seems that this pad has a lot less slop in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a razor blade. I'm trying to slice off this trunk button because it feels like it's interfering. Contact pad and chip. I'll line it up in here. Go ahead and slide it in. I'll go ahead and we'll stuff our buttons right back into this housing. And I'm going to go ahead and trim some of this excess right here so it doesn't interfere with the closing of the housing. There we go. Look at that. That's sitting flush now. Alright, so it looks like gonna have to take the battery out but not only does the battery come out looks like we have to take this piece out the contacts all right try to press that nib right in there I'll go ahead and put the battery in plus side up all right here we go Mate them two together. Drop in our screws. Tighten them up. There it is. Ha <laughs> ha. Nice. All right, guys, looking good. Two new WJ keys. I just hit this up with a little bit of WD-40. Now it really snaps out there. That's great. So let's give it a test, see if it works. Unlock. Lock. Panic. Unlock. Lock. Panic. I said panic. <laughs> there we go. And of course, key and key. Good to go. All right, guys. We got our keys. But before we get too excited, there's one more obstacle we have to overcome. Now, if you guys are good at Jeeps, you'll know. We got the skim feature. Sentry key immobilization. Yeah. And we have to use this key to overcome that. And inside these keys is a little chip. And you'll know if you have a skim module by having the gray key. The fatter gray key heads are Jeeps equipped with skim. If you have a skinnier black key, you don't have skim. But we have it. We're going to have to defeat the skim. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a place to mount this key. Watch this. If I keep this key nearby, start the vehicle, skim goes away. So on startup, the Jeep needs to detect the head of this key. Now, if it's too far away, nope, not close enough. So we gotta find ourselves a spot somewhere inside here 
to mount this key so this baby will never give us a skim error ever again. Here is our skim module. Let's see what happens when we unplug it. Maybe we'll just do that. Nothing. Looks like we gotta have that plugged in. You win, Jeep. We'll plug you in. All right, so our skim module goes right up here. Looks like it wraps around our good old tumbler. So we know that this whole arm senses the key. So what if we just rest our key right up here? Let's see if this works. There we go. <laughs> she likes it right there. All right, we're gonna go zip tie that key there. We'll put everything back together and then we are done. Well, there she is, guys. Key is zip tied right on top of that skim module. Start her up with our new key. And she accepts, yay. All right, guys. Went from having one fob and one key to having one key and three fobs thanks to this nice little Dorman programmer. $80 on Amazon, really cool. You could program up to four keys on your WJ. You could program your existing stock fobs and new fobs all at the same time. I bought two, again, $80 each. A little expensive, that's why I got two. But then I went ahead and I upped the game and I got these really cool flip out keys had these two keys cut, and then I went ahead and I added the computer chip, the internals from these fobs into this. So I got a nice compact unit. I got two working functioning keys for this WJ. Really cool, I'll save these peanuts in case one of my XJ peanuts break. I'll go ahead and I'll take this peanut, put this in the sock drawer. This, this key right here, this key is just a prop. It's actually Black Beauty's key <laughs> for the outro of the video. But I went ahead and, of course, you know, I put this up in the steering column, zip tied it in there. I bypassed that skim feature. Um, if you don't want to bypass the skim feature and you have two working keys, you could, uh, I guess you could crack this open with a chisel. There's a little chip in here and you could probably just glue this chip into these. So you will not have to bypass your skim feature. I don't really care. I don't really like the skim feature anyway. Um, so I bypassed it. Don't steal my Jeep. <laughs> That's going to do it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Again, all the links to all these products will be in the description below. And that's it. Remember to like, subscribe, and I will see you on the next project. Peace.